Hi, I want to go over with you today some differences between gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. So let's have a look. Now, bacteria are unicell prokaryotes, and nearly all of them have cell walls. And I'll explain what I mean by nearly all of them in a second. The cell wall is made of peptidoglycan, which as you remember from one of my videos, these are modified sugar polymers cross-linked by short peptides. So peptidoglycan makes up the cell wall of the bacteria. Now in mycoplasma, these are bacteria without cell walls. Something we never mentioned in the group, but God forbid if that ever landed on the DAT or the MCAT. So mycoplasma, bacteria without cell walls, and they're among the smallest of all life forms. And f to give you a concrete one, mycoplasma pneumoniae, um, would cause a form of pneumonia. So as you can see, these type of bacteria um, are devoid of cell walls. The archaea, which are also pro uh, prokaryotes, they have cell walls, if you remembered, but not made of peptidoglycan. I've seen a, a few PhD scientists called it pseudopeptidoglycan and other names, but these are basically protein and polysaccharides that make up the cell wall, but it's not made of peptidoglycan. Now, we can have a discussion for hours, days on this, but let me just give you the essentials, what I think you need on bacteria. There's gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. The gram-positive, an example would be strep mutans. Mark, do you, have, you ever hear of strep mutans? Anybody ever heard of that? Strep Well, this is one of the bacteria that's involved in causing cavities. So all you budding dentists out there, you're gonna be seeing that in dental school. So strep mutans causes dental cavities. Um, half a dental visits, by the way, are for treating cavities. Gram-positive bacteria have thick cell walls of peptidoglycans. They're very thick. They contain a plasma membrane. They're negatively charged gram-positive bacteria, and they're negatively charged because they contain tocoic acids. These acids maintain the structure and they serve as receptors for bacteriophages. And we'll be doing a problem and destroy it tonight um, on tocoic acids. A gram-positive bacteria stains purple and violet when treated with the gram stain, and it remains this color after we wash it with alcohol and water. So you're gonna remember gram-positive stains purple or violet, and after you do the wash, it stays that same color. Gram-positive bacteria can form spores under stressful environmental conditions for their survival. There was a good question in Destroyer on this. An example of these environmental stresses would be extreme hot or extreme cold. So a gram-positive bacteria is associated with spores. Now gram-negative bacteria, the most famous one would be E. coli. Um, they have very thin cell walls of peptidoglycan. They have plasma membranes, just like gram-positive, but they lack tocoic acids. So they lack the tocoic acids, but they have an additional outer membrane, which is always a trick question. Um, this outer membrane is unique to the gram-negative bacteria. This is a lipid bilayer studded with proteins, which is one reason these are very difficult to destroy or um, remove from the body if we have antibiotics or drugs. Gram-negative stains red or pink after the gram stain, but it doesn't retain the stain and it washes out. So that we wanna keep in mind too, these are two big things about the stain. So it stains red or pink after the stain, but it doesn't retain it when we wash it with water and alcohol. And finally, the gram-negative bacteria have endotoxins. The endotoxins is part of the outer membrane and it's released upon death and cell wall breakdown. Um, and if you remember, things like salmonella that can cause food poisoning and stuff like that, that's due to the endotoxins, which can make you very sick. So there you have it. You should know some good fundamentals as far as the differences between gram-positive and gram-negative types of bacteria. All right, I'll see you next time and maybe we'll do a little more biochemistry. All right, bye-bye.